Hi, it's Wasabi. Welcome back to the channel. This is another Clan Wars campaign battle, and we're on the Lakeville map, and it's another basic front game, so 10v10, and we are against Lemon Clan again. Now, we're the defending team on this map, so uh, we defend the cap, and the other side has to um, basically either cap us out or destroy all of our tanks. Right, we're going to see some interesting tactics here. Um, now, the typical thing for this um, side of the map is to basically defend the base from behind the cap. Um, but uh, this positioning of two tanks here is strategic, so we'll explain that in a little while. So, we've got a mouse backing in and an ice 4 and you'll see why that's in place in a little while. So, now the early stages of the game are quite static. Um, the enemy side has to move up and basically take position. So they'll either come up that middle road through the city, or in fact um, up the up the valley. The valley is the slowest method in terms of um, ground performance, so it's not typical, but it might be in the latter part of the game. Now then he spotted an object 279 and you can see the mouse has already taken some damage and he keeps taking some damage so clearly they've got a spotter and they're basically shooting the mouse but well, that is part of the tactic. Now potentially some arty there, some unseen tanks firing. And there's a bit of counter fire going on. So there's nothing spotted down yet. Now the mass is dead. But that is not an issue. That's actually part of the plan. Well, obviously it'd be nice to keep it alive, but the purpose of the mouse in that position is to give some protection to the ice 4 And again, we'll explain why that position is important in a second. But we'll just see. Yeah, how the enemy is approaching. You see that really they've pushed some chieftains up through the town to speed up the replay a little while because this part of the battle is again pretty static. So now you're starting to spot some tanks coming through the town. Um, we don't have a light tank in this battle. And they've got an EBR 105. And there's definitely some tanks on the um, on the middle road, but there's no active spotting of that that road there. Um, Geordie's tank is basically behind the, the mouse, so probably doesn't have vision up the road anyway. Now you can see that tanks down below are basically using the low ground, so they're just showing the tops of their turrets, and for chieftains that's a pretty strong position. Now Geordie's starting to take some hits, that um, Object 279 is getting into a position, it's actually behind a bush, which is probably why he's not being spotted as well. In fact, okay, they're pushing some tanks down that line. They've got a two mouse and an Object 279, and the object and the tactic they're using would be to push those tanks onto cap and potentially create a hole between them that a smaller tank could drop into. So whether that EBR 105 is part of the thing. Okay, now you can see why this position is important. See where that object 279 is. Now he's been proxy spotted by Geordie. Now this is typically a position with that bush next to the house where enemy tanks can come in, shoot from behind the bush with cover to basically start taking out the defending team. So by having this tank here is effectively defeating that purpose. And uh, it's possibly because uh, the ice ball was picked because of its bounceability. Um, it's a bit more heavily armored than an ice seven, and that mouse is basically soaking up a lot of hits. You can see all of the damage around it, but that object 279E behind is being lit permanently by the ice ball. So that's the importance of this section of the map. Let's go back up into our oh, check out where I'm still on double speed. That's why the Lines are coming. Look, look there's a train. <laughs> yeah, anyway, sorry. Um, so, we'll keep it on double time for the moment, just because, again, pretty slow moving through this section of the game. 
and they are taking their time, but it gets down to the three minute mark, they really have to push in and, and do something. So Geordie just uh, picking out some positions on the map, telling people to pay attention to them. You can see the enemy's just holding. They're trying to see if they can whittle down the ice bore and get rid of it. So far he hasn't taken any damage. And you can see from the hit points of the ice bore he's probably using the boosters that are available in the campaign to uh, basically improve your tank survivability. And he takes a hit. The interesting that. Um, Hit from the Chieftain and managed to just thread a gap, it looks like. So whether he can continue to do that or not, that remains to be seen. But so far that's the only damage that the Ice Boar's taken. So the other tanks on the uh, line are staying in place. Now you can see also the um, Chieftain covering the 1-2 uh, line is spotted the EBR 105 and it's just pushing it back and there's a chieftain coming up there. So that's also interesting information. That uh, means the um, tanks are split. Alright, Jordy's taken a hit there from Object 279. He's obviously worked himself into a position where he can shoot down from a higher angle and just get over the top of the mouse and into the turret of the Ice 4 possibly and maybe even to the roof of the Ice 4. It's a bit hard to tell. But um, that's uh, interesting. Now the other advantage of this position here, and we will see this hopefully in a few minutes, is when they do push on cap, he's obviously got um, cross shots into them as they, they come across because they'll be basically presenting their fronts towards the Object 279s there and the other tanks trying to defend to obviously use their frontal armour. So it's in the interest of this team. Now we're getting down to the three minute mark, so we might just go back on to normal time, or we'll go back to the normal time as soon as they start moving in, because that will be the, the trigger. If you can see here, they're just trying to keep out of sight, probably marshalling in a particular spot, getting ready for the move. And it looks like the mouse is moving. Yeah, here they come. So let's just go back into normal time. Two and a half minutes to go. It's really this decision point, they've got to do something or they will not win. And if they don't win, then uh, even if it's a draw, we will have the victory. So all we have to do is survive and stop them capping. And that's a win for Fiddy. So here comes the object 279. So it's pushing on first, then this mouse. And they've got two tanks on cap now. The Object 279E probably will push on shortly. In fact, there's two of them there. So yeah, this is typical. Four extremely heavy tanks. Uh, they might be running hardening. It's a bit hard to tell. Can't remember the numbers, to be honest. Um, Geordie can get resets. Now you can see there's only two minutes to go. They've got three tanks on cap. They can cap in 20 seconds now. If, if no one gets a reset, but they've been reset already. Geordie starting to take some interest. Object 279 is pushing up next to him, but again, he's permanently lit. Geordie gets a kill on the mouse. There's still three tanks on cap, however, uh, but they, again, they keep getting reset. So, this is basically they either stop getting the reset, they need to kill the Ice 4 and kill any tanks shooting into them. There's only a minute and 24 seconds left, they're still continuing to shoot the Ice 4. and they're not really getting a lot of success in running the cap. They've only got four tanks on cap, and it's interesting the other tanks haven't really pushed up. I think they've taken a lot of damage already. One minute to go. Two tanks on cap now, and the time's starting to blow out. 40 seconds to cap, and they keep getting reset. So Geordie's just, he's a one-shot now. We'll get another shot of damage in. Track not penetrated, that's unfortunate, it does get killed. That's alright, the 279 goes down, they're pushing in, kill the final tanks on caps, only 30 seconds left. And the enemy is starting to lose tanks as well. So again, we don't have to win to get a victory, we just have to prevent them from winning. And our tanks are pushing in. Kill the final tanks on cap. 10 seconds to go. Let's see if they can get any more kills. 
there's a one shot chieftain there. Two seconds left. Get the kill. And that is the battle. So let's have a look at the results. Right across the team, uh, Spitball, one of our new callers actually, uh, joined the clan recently, so welcome Spitball. Um, did uh, 4.4k, um, Toxic Farmer in the 279 did a 4.5k, so top damage there and good spread of damage there across there, apart from our mouse who got sacrificed at the start, um, so no shame there, that tank played a serious part in the game. Uh, on the other side, yeah, it's quite a few tanks got um, quite a lot of damage there. Um, the Object 279s and a couple of the Chieftain there. Um, so good performance from Lemon there. Um, it is a tough ask. The defending team really has an advantage uh, at, at that end. And um, it's really hard to dig, dig them out, particularly when you use innovative tactics like that. Uh, anyway, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. We'll have more great content for you through the week and thanks for watching.